Let's do one more example of changing variables. This one is not going to be standard spherical or cylindrical coordinates. It's going to be a special change of variables, but uh, nothing too sophisticated. So we want to calculate, uh, calculate, calculate. We want to calculate. That's what we're here for. No, I'm just no, sorry. Calculate um, the triple integral over the domain v of the function x, y divided by z, dx, dy, dz, where, where v, v is the solid given by all the points x, y, and z, satisfying that x, y, and z are positive. <sighs> y is between 3x and 4x. This looks good for starters, right? It means that it, it looks like it's heading for a simple domain. y is between two functions of x. Do you agree? Okay. But then I'm adding xy is between 1 and 2. Ouch. That's intertwining x and y again. So it's not clear how this is going to develop. And finally, z is less than or equal x squared plus y squared, which in turn is less than or equal 3z. So looking at this and thinking, what is this? It's a bit tricky. It's not clear what this domain is. Okay, It needs deciphering. Let's decipher it. So forget z for a second. You can see that z only has to satisfy this, these two inequalities. Let's look at the xy coordinates. And there it's not that difficult. So for x and y, here's a bird's eye view of the xy plane. For x and y, y equals 3x and y equals 4x are two lines like this. Right? This is, let's say, y equals 3x and y equals 4x. Do you agree? And y has to be between them. Cool. It's in here in this slice, only for positive x's and y's. And then xy equals 1 is y equals 1 over x. y equals 1 over x is this hyperbola. And then there's y equals 2 over x there. So it turns out to be similar to a problem we did previously, so this is, let's say, y equals 2 over x, and this one is y equals 1 over x, and the domain in the xy plane is this thing. Does everybody see that? Now, for every x and y, the z's have to satisfy this inequality. So tell me if you agree now, since this is a bird's eye view of the xy plane, the z's are sitting up here. The z-axis is coming out at us. Do you agree? And z equals x squared plus y squared is a paraboloid sitting like this, right? And 3z equals x squared plus y squared, or z equals x squared plus y squared over 3 is again a paraboloid, but it's a bit, it's divided by 3, so it's a bit more open. So I have the same melanish kind of, melanish from melon, kind of phenomena that we had a couple of examples ago. I have two paraboloids, one inside the other, and I'm only looking at the domain between the two paraboloids. Okay? Is it clear what I'm... Sometimes I find myself, I think of somebody pressing pause and seeing me do this on the board. And what, what, what's going on here? Okay, so there are two paraboloids, one inside the other, sitting up here, and I'm looking at the domain between them, above this thing. Do you agree? That's damn hard to draw. Do you see that? I'm not even going to try. Let alone to write it as a simple domain in terms of x, y, and z. Ah, scary. Okay? Let's do change of variables. Okay? So is it clear what just happened? Okay, let me just add that uh, uh, and z's between the paraboloids
uh, z equals x squared plus y squared over 3 and z equals x squared plus y squared. Good? Okay, so this was just a bit of blah blah trying to decipher the domain and I'm only going to go as far in this deciphering as understanding that this is too difficult for me to, to try to, to work with like this. Too difficult. Too difficult to draw, too difficult to write as a simple domain. Maybe not. You can try. I mean, the z's do sit nicely between functions of x and y. This can be deciphered. You can break this. It, it may be doable. But there's a better way of doing it. Let's do change of variables. And the change of variables, I'm, I'm going to write it again on the next board, but before that I'm going to show you where it comes from. So the, the variables I'm going to choose are the following. I'm going to call x, y, this is going to be v. The new variables are going to be u, v, and w. This is going to be v. Do you agree that if, that if v equals x, y, then in the new domain, v is just between 1 and 2, right? And x squared plus y squared divided by z, so x squared plus y squared divided by z, this is going to be my w. Then in the new domain, w is going to be between 1 and 3. Do you see that? And y over x, sorry, this, this is u, sorry, sorry. Let's be consistent with the names I have on my page. And w is going to be y over x. So in the new domain, w is simply going to lie between 3 and 4. Do you agree? Okay, so I'm really choosing... Even without, I can do this even without uh, a clear understanding of the geometric interpretation of this V, I can still do this. Okay? And these new variables, V is between 1 and 2, W is between 3 and 4, U is between 1 and 3, I'm getting a box. The most simple domain possible the simplest iterated integral possible. I just have to transfer the function carefully and I have to find a Jacobian. Okay, so let's do that. So we're declaring new variables. Define um, u equals x squared plus y squared over z. Uh, v equals x, y and w equals y over x in uvw, in the new uh, coordinates, v is given by w where w is the set of points satisfying u between 1 and 3 v between 1 and 2, and little w between 3 and 4, i.e. a box. Good? Okay, let's calculate the Jacobian. What's the Jacobian? So here, I gave u, v, and w as functions of x, y, and z. So instead of trying to write x, y, and z as functions of u, v, and w and taking the derivatives, I'm going to calculate j inverse. j inverse is taking the derivatives of u, v, and w with respect to x, y, and z. And then j, by a theorem that we mentioned, j is going to be 1 over j inverse, the inverse of j inverse. Okay, so this is what? This is the determinant of u with respect to x, u with respect to x is 2x over z. Do you agree? Everybody with me? u with respect to y, which is 2y over z, and u with respect to z, which is 
minus x squared plus y squared over z squared, right? x squared plus y squared are now fixed, and the derivative of 1 over z is negative 1 over z squared. Good? This is the derivatives of the derivative of the, der the partial derivatives of u with respect to the old variables. Now v. v with respect to x is y, v with respect to y is x, v with respect to z is 0. And now w. w with respect to x is negative y over x squared, w with respect to y is 1 over x, and w with respect to z is 0. Good? Everybody know what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, why we're here? Yep. Okay. Let's calculate this. So I'm going to use this column, obviously, to evaluate it. So it's just this times this little determinant. That's it. The rest die because of these zeros, right? So what I get, I'm going to write it on the next board, is this times this minus this. So I get minus x squared plus y squared over z squared times x, sorry, times y over x minus minus plus xy over x squared, which is the same as um, y over x again. Do you agree? So all in all, I get the Jacobian is minus x squared plus y squared. Um, there's going to be a 2 here from here. y over x, so there's going to be another y here. And then there's going to be an xz squared on the bottom. That's the Jacobian. Does everybody agree? Good. And remember, this was J inverse, so J itself in absolute value is 1 over J inverse in absolute value, so it's going to be, the minus is gone, so it's going to be XZ squared divided by 2Y X squared plus Y squared. This is the Jacobian in absolute value that we have to plug into the integral. Okay? Good. And now, what's the integral we want to evaluate? Let's write it again so we don't forget. So the integral, the original integral, is the integral over the original domain of x, y over z, dx, dy, dz. Now here there's a, there's a nice little phenomenon going on, a nice little trick. If you try to, to write this in the in the original, in, the, in, in u, v, and w, and try to transfer this to u, v, and w, it gets a bit, of mess, a bit messy. Things don't fit in nicely. But on the other hand, if you think for a minute what's going on here, you may notice that, uh, so before I write equals, well, let's write, let's write equals, but before we do it, we notice, and this we notice comes from uh, experience in noticing to note that sometimes you have to notice things like this. That was a cool thing to say. So sometimes you have to pay attention to things like this. That, if we take the function and the Jacobian, and everything has to be in terms of uvw, so we notice that I'm going to rewrite the function times the D Jacobian, and see the u, v, and w there. So x, um, y over z times, I'm going to write here, x over y times uh, z squared over x squared plus y squared times 1 half. Do you agree that all this together is the function times the Jacobian in x, y, and z? Do you see that? Do you see that this z squared can cancel out with this z? And now do you see that xy is simply v? 
x over y is simply u. No, w. And z over x squared plus y squared is simply 1 over u. Do you see that? Okay. So noticing this means that the integral can now be written as the integral from 1 to 3 du. The order doesn't matter here because it's a box of the integral from 1 to 2 dv, of the integral from 3, oops, missing snake, of the integral from 3 to 4 dw, of the function vw over u. This is f times the Jacobian written in u, v, and w. One half, exactly, one half. Thanks. Good? What did I do wrong? 1 over W? You're right. It's 1 over W. You're absolutely right. Thanks. So this is 1 over W. This is 1 over W. And therefore this thing is V over U W. Good? Thanks a lot. Okay, and now this is a very simple integral to calculate. The, all the bounds are numbers, so no, no variables are going to propagate from one integral to another. And what's it going to be? This is, the, is going to be v squared over 2. These are going to introduce some uh, lns, right? 1 over u, 1 over w. And I'm leaving it to you to calculate. It's very simple to calculate, and what we get uh, equals I'm going to tell you what the answer was, provided I calculated it correctly. 3 over 4 ln of 3 times ln of 4 over 3. That's it. That, that's what it boils down to. Okay? Calculate it. It's a couple of lines. Okay. So... Summing up this clip, the ideas are, one, remember the option to do J inverse. In general, remember that what you get should be translated to U, V, and W, right? We get it in X, Y, and Zs, but we have to translate it back. Two, remember that sometimes what you get and the function separately can be tricky to translate, right? If you want to translate X, Y over Z to U, V, and W, it doesn't fit in nicely with what you u, v, and w were. But if you multiply them, sometimes nice things can happen. Okay? Okay. This wraps up our discussion of, um, of triple integrals. We may add another clip. I have to decide according to our time limits. Doing some things with more uh, uh, physics flavor, uh, like charge density and things like that that arise from physics. It's the same calculations after one line of translating the word problem to a math problem, everything is the same, but maybe we'll do one of those. And then we're going to continue to uh, line integrals and surface integrals, which are the next topics we have to cover. Coming up next. <laughs>